Hi, my name is Ronan Cashel from IT Integrated Business Solutions. Recently, a developer raised a question with me as to the implication of renaming all of his .html files to .php on his website. Clearly, there was going to be a performance hit. However, to what extent, we didn't know. The purpose of this screencast presentation today is to show the test that we conducted and to show the impact on performance and there was significant impact. Before we continue, let's just recap some of the basics about web server technologies. A web server can serve multiple types of files. The most commonly known one is HTML. When a web server processes a HTML file, it simply reads the content of the file and passes it back to the client. So the content is static, there is no processing and the information gets relayed directly back to the client. There are other file extensions that the web server is capable of processing. PHP is the one that we're going to talk about today, but there are others like Java server pages, Ruby on Rails, Python, and even Oracle's own PL SQL pages. These are typically used for dynamic content, where information is read from a database and embedded within a HTML file, which is then relayed back to the client. There are designated points on a page where processing needs to take place and is handled by the PHP engine before the finished HTML document is sent to the client. Now that we have the basics under our belt, we're going to have a look at the test cases. The test cases that we've set up are simply taking an index.html file and copying it to index.php so there will be even no processing taking place. And this file, the contents of the file, will be sent to a Linux or Unix slash dev slash null, which is simply making the content disappear. It would be like transmitting across a network to uh, a browser, obviously much quicker because it's memory based, but it's, it's not doing any action with that information. But we should be able to see the difference between the two, one processing with PHP and the other one just transmitting the content, the index.html content to slash dev slash null. Another test that we've conducted today is using the include once function. Is there an impact if we include once an index.html file, so a static HTML file, versus a, a PHP file? So this is another test case that we're, we're also going to have a look at. So let's get down and have a look at this test case. To speed up the processing, I have already created a script called php.bash which contains the scenarios that we talked about earlier on. We are looping around performing the same action 20 times so that we get a much more realistic timing. We can obviously divide that time by 20 to get each individual action taking place. In the first case, we're sending an HTML or we're simulating a send uh, of a HTML file. So the action that we're taking, that we're, we're enacting is a cache, which is simply reading the contents of the index.html and outputting it to slash dev slash null. This is performed 20 times and we're using the Unix time command to actually get the timings for completing that action. The second item or test case is using the PHP to generate 
the file. So in this case here you can see that we are using PHP on the index.php the output we're just sending to slash dev slash null. The third test case is using test1.php and we also have test.php. I'll show you all of these files in a minute. I'm also going to show you the index.html and the index.php are not different or are identical. If we use the diff command of index.html and index.php, we can see there are no differences in the two files. If we look at the, the files themselves, we can see that they are roughly around 5k in size. The test and test1 files are basically including once the index.html and index.php and these are, are test case scenarios two, 3 and 4. So now to run the script we simply execute this So if we look at the time to send the HTML file, the real here indicates the actual duration in terms of seconds that it took to complete. The user time here indicates the amount of user CPU that was used and sys indicates the amount of time that system calls were being made while executing all of this. Now in the time to send HTML we can clearly see this happened very very quickly. On the other hand when we had to do a PHP of the index.html file or index.php file even though there was no processing that needed to take place in that file it still took 4.371 seconds which is you know of order of magnitude larger than just sending the HTML so we can conclude from this that having static HTML files will, will clearly give better performance the PHP engine if we include another PHP file or if we include a HTML file we can see that there's very little difference between the two so in those cases there is no no difference so it, this can continue the way it is to recap our findings we can clearly state that using HTML files versus PHP will have a significant improvement in performance if CPU becomes an issue and likewise because PHP does all of its processing in memory the larger the, the index.html file the more memory consumed uh, the more memory that PHP will consume while processing that index.html file I hope you've enjoyed this screencast today and I hope it's enlightened you a little bit on PHP and HTML please follow us again on our new channel on YouTube and uh, yeah we look forward to to seeing and hear hearing from you soon thank you bye